Hello everyone, a very happy Janmashtami to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Today I have brought to you very interesting question. So let's quickly begin with this video. I hope all of you are aware of the new timetable of RBI SEBI and ABAD live classes. This is the timetable and this is our mobile application. If you want to know more about the offerings that we have on the application, then you can download it from the Play Store. Okay, moving ahead to the very first question. What is the name of the database created by NCB for arrested narcotics offenders? So here guys, you have the five options out of which Nidan is the right answer. Nidan is basically to get rid of. So in order to get rid of this crime of drugs smuggling and narcotics in uh, its entirety, this platform has been launched okay so basically through this platform all the agencies like police the ncb and every kind of agency will be connected and the database of the already arrested narcotics offenders will be uh, promulgated to each and every agency so that they can take the necessary action in time so it's nothing but an online platform for the integration of various investigating agencies okay investigating and prosecution agencies Okay, now Nidan has a full form, National Integrated Database on Arrested Narco Offenders. Okay, so I have al already told you that this is for the arrested people. Usually we see that the platforms are launched for arresting the people or curbing a crime. But here what we are seeing, we are seeing that there, this is the database of the people who have already been arrested. So this makes it a bit uh, easy for you to remember because this is the unique speciality of this portal. Okay, so arrested narco offenders, you can remember from here. Now, it is going to be a database that would integrate all the agencies working at the national level. So if you understand and remember the Nidan portal in this manner, then it would be easier for you to remember the full form of it. Okay, national integrated database on arrested narco offenders. Now guys, the developer of this would be the National uh, uh, Narcotics Control Bureau and it is part of the Narcotics Coordination Mechanism portal. So there is a larger portal and a part of that larger N-code portal is this Nidan portal. So this N-code portal was launched by the Union Minister, uh, Union Home Minister Amit Shah during the National Conference on drug trafficking and national security which was held in the month of july in chandigarh so do remember these two facts as well because that these can also be asked now there are specifically three platforms that would be integrated with the nidan platform first would be this icjs that is interoperable criminal justice system now this system was launched by supreme court to in, uh, integrate all the um, investigative agencies and the agencies engaged in providing the legal service okay so that the judgments or any kind of information can travel fast so this is the platform of the supreme court then we have e prisons a cloud based application or a repository then we have the cctns which is the national integrated database on which the home ministry is working on uh, to implement so right now the icjs and e prisons have been integrated with this nidan portal because if this portal if this uh, you can say the website of this icjs is integrated with the uh, nidan portal then obviously all the agencies would get the information the messages and the information can travel fast with the help of this portal. Then if the information of the prisoners is provided through the e-prison platform on the Nidan platform also, then obviously it would serve the purpose of Nidan. And this CCTNS is the national integrated database that Minister of Home Affairs is creating to curb any kind of terrorist and uh, terrorist and illegal activity in India, okay? So it has been developed since we had the 26-11 attack. Uh, it has been developed since then, okay? The next question is, which edition of the Asian Textile Conference, TexCon, was organized in New Delhi? So it was the 10th edition of this Asian Textile Conference that was organized. 
Now, what is the purpose? It is just a conference. Uh, and here, the textile minister, Piyush Goyal, highlighted the National Technical Textile Mission. So, this mission is in the news and precisely because of this mission, I took this news for the video. So, guys, this uh, National Technical Textile Mission is covered thoroughly in your government schemes bundle. Do cover this mission uh, from exam perspective because it is important. Now, the next point that Piyush Goyal highlighted during this meeting was to make the textile sector sustainable. Okay, so that was another point, not very important from exam perspective. The important thing is this mission, cover it, okay. What is the name of India's longest and heaviest freight train? So it is, guys, Vasuki. Do you know who Vasuki is in Indian mythology, sorry, Hindu mythology? Uh, Vasuki is the name of the snake of Lord Shiva. So this is Super Vasuki. It is the longest and heaviest freight train that India has operated so far. Okay. So it has 295 loaded wagons and six engines and it is 3.5 kilometer long railways. Now here what are the points that you need to remember? Obviously these specifications are not important. The important part is the route on which this railway uh, was operated for the first time. So this train was operated on the route of Korba to uh, Rajnand Gaon. Okay? Korba is in Chhattisgarh and Rajnand Gaon is in Nagpur. So from Chhattisgarh to Nagpur, this train was operated for the first time and it is Super Vasuki. Indian Railways has developed it and is operating this train. Next question is which state has launched the Lucky Bill app developed by the Kerala D Digital University to prevent GST evasion by companies. So here guys, what is the right answer? The right answer is Kerala. So what is the purpose? The purpose of this portal is to, uh, is to create awareness among the consumers so that they would upload the bills of the purchases that they have made. And if the bills are available on this portal, then obviously the customs department and not the custom department, but the uh, indirect access department of the state would identify the GST uh, that the companies and the merchants need to pay. So it is an indirect method through which this indirect tax would be collected from the tax evaders. Okay. Now remember it is the Kerala government, Kerala Digital University has developed this um, portal. In order to encourage the customers to upload their bills, this application is also going to offer the prices to the customers. Okay. Next question is, which has become India's first fully functional literate district? So here, Mandla district, which is in Madhya Pradesh, is the first fully literate district of India. Okay. Can any one of you tell me that which district has become the first district in India to provide constitutional literacy to every person? So this is your question. Do, pro do tell me in the comment section. So there is nothing much to this news. As far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, so there are two cities from Madhya Pradesh only which are listed in the UNESCO World Heritage Cities list, which are Gwalior and Orcha. Which one is the first city to get into the list of World Heritage uh, of UNESCO? It was Ahmedabad, then Jaipur. So at present, we have four cities, Ahmedabad, Jaipur, Gwalior and Orcha, which are the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Cities from India. Apart from this, if we are talking about the important cities, so let me inform you that Hyderabad and Mumbai are classified as the three cities of India in this year. Okay, so this is also important. The next question is, which state has launched the Vidya Rath School on Wheels project? So it is Assam. Now the purpose of this initiative is to provide the education at the uh, basically at the doorsteps, okay? So basically to increase the access to education for the poor people. This Vidya Rath Schools on Wheel project has been launched, okay? And it has been launched on India's 76th Independence Day. Yes, the Independence Day is the 76th Independence Day, whereas we have completed the 75 years of independence. I hope you know this basic difference between the 75 years and 76th Independence Day. 
okay it's a very basic minute difference if you don't know then do tell me i will clarify it but let me test your awareness as well so if you know it then you can mention it also in the comment section now coming back to this news so what is the purpose the purpose is to provide economically challenged under privileged children access to elementary education for a period of 10 months okay so that is the basic idea Next question is how much is the budgetary allocation obligation on the exchequer for providing interest subvention of 1.5% per year on short term agricultural loans of up to rupees 3 lakh. So here the right answer is option D rupees 34,856 crores is the obligation on the central government. Basically central government has announced that from now onwards the loan of the farmers, the loans which have a shorter duration the short term loans would have an interest subvention of 1.5 percent and the uh, the burden or the um, uh, the monetary obligation for fulfilling this gap for the banks is rupees 34,856 crore that would be the hit on the pockets of the government okay so that's all there is nothing much now the loans that will be given by the public and private sector banks small finance bank regional rural bank, cooperative bank, computerized primary agricultural credit societies, all of such loans which are given for shorter duration to the agriculturalist, those loans, actually the farmers, not the agriculturalist, because agriculturalist would not only be the farmers, agriculturalist would be any person who is engaged with the field of agriculture, if it is a student of agriculture also. So that person would also be called an agriculturalist. So here we are talking about the farmers. So the farmers who have taken a shorter term loan, which is of rupees 3 lakh, they would get an interest subvention of 1.5% per year from FI23 to FI25. Okay. The next question is, what is the total food grain production forecast as per the fourth estimate of major agricultural crops for the year 2021 to 2022? Again, Dhanavad students, your examination is just around the corner. This question is very important. So, the total food grain production is 315.72 million tons. So, this is the fourth advance estimate for the previous year's crops. Okay, do remember this fact. Now, here you have been given many crops and I know that it is very hard for you to remember all such data. So what you can do is you can remember the most prominent crops like rice, wheat, sugarcane. I will tell you why sugarcane. But first know this fact that which are the most important food crops here. Rice, wheat, total food grain, then, then your cotton and sugarcane. These are the most important food grains that uh, you should be aware of. Okay. Now again. One more question is there for in your minds, students have asked me this thing that which estimate should we remember? We have first, second, third advanced estimates and now the fourth has come. So which one should we remember? So guys, always remember the latest data that has been released because remember this fact that these are the estimates. These are not the uh, complete data on the production. So estimates are always important when they are the latest, okay? So this is the latest one. So do remember this one and forget the third edition of the uh, estimates. Okay. Now you can clearly remember the data that is given here. In rice, we are getting a record 130.29 million tons of production. Then we have wheat at 106.84 million tons. Sugarcane at 431.81 million tons. Now why did I tell you sugarcane? Because we have the total food grain production at 315.72 million tons but only sugarcane is 43 431.81 uh, million tons now here two dimensions are there first is that dimensions or rather news that are associated with sugarcane first is that indian government incentivize the farmers by giving them subsidies to grow sugarcane Okay, therefore, the sugarcane farmers are uh, in a better position and they want to grow sugarcane more and more. Therefore, there are certain countries which have sued India in WTO. And this is your question. You are going to tell me that which countries have sued India in WTO against the 
subsidies that Indian government offers to the sugarcane farmers. Okay, because that is considered as an unfair measure of trade by the countries which have sued India and WTO. Okay, so this is uh, your question. Another importance of sugarcane is this ethanol production because we create uh, ethanol from sugarcane, the molasses of the sugarcane, and therefore India needs more and more sugarcane, okay, uh, more and more such products so that we can create ethanol. Can anyone of you tell me that which generation of biofuel would ethanol be because it is being directly sourced from sugarcane. So which generation of it would be first, second, third and fourth? This is your second question. Do tell me because I have told you this fact, this distinction uh, of the generations of biofuel. So do tell me. Okay, moving ahead, the next question is which bank is offering Ultima salary package to the employees of Food Corporation of India? So here, what is the right answer? It is Excess Bank. It is offering this Ultima salary package and this is going to be a, a suit of services that this bank would offer to the employees of the FCR. And there is nothing much to remember in this news apart from the three facts. Excess Bank, Food Corporation of India and this Ultima salary package okay apart from this in this package only there were many amounts like accidental insurance air accident insurance disability insurance so many things were there which i found very cumbersome in nature firstly and secondly not very important therefore i have skipped that information so the information that is in front of you that is precise and uh, important for your examination so remember this much and this is just for your understanding the last question of the day is Recently, Chennai-based drone startup Garud Aerospace has partnered with Harar uh, Institute of Technology and Yangini v Virtual University to offer drones as a service to the agricultural sector. Which country does the letter belong to? So, it belongs to Zimbabwe. Therefore, the names are a bit difficult to pronounce. So, here, this Harare uh, Institute of Technology and Yangini Virtual University, both of them belong to uh, Zimbabwe. They have partnered with Garud Aerospace so that the Garud Aerospace can provide them with the drones. And those drones will be deployed in the agricultural sector by Zimbabwe. That is the basic news. Okay, now one more thing is here that it is the Garud Aerospace, Garud Aerospace second partnership second international partnership okay because the first one it did with a malaysian company okay hail se drones which is a malaysian drone company and now it has ex, uh, the garuda aerospace has spread its wings to zimbabwe as well and this is the first partnership of garuda aerospace in zimbabwe okay so guys, that is all for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video and if there are any feedbacks you feel about the video, about the teaching style, any kind of improvement that you need feel, uh, please mention it in the comment section below. If I found them feasible, I will definitely try to work on them. Thank you so much guys for watching this video.